Hey there, thank you so much for deciding to paint with me. Today we're going to make a little white chapel, a mixed media piece. And I'm going to go over all the supplies that you're going to need here on the video. And I also have a list on the website that you can go through and make a shopping list and go to the store. Or some of these things you may already have on hand at home. Um, I hope that once you're finished that you're going to share this creation that you have made with me. You can do that by going to um, artbyamandahilburn.com or you can send me an email with a picture of what you created at artbyamandahilburn at gmail.com. Okay, let's get started. First of all, we're going to need a white canvas. I usually buy my canvases from Michaels. They have them at Walmart. They have them at Hobby Lobby. You can pretty much get a canvas at any craft store that's in your area. I'm also going to be using some scrapbook paper. Um, you can get this in a large book similar to this. This is my newest one that I just bought at Hobby Lobby the other day and I really like all the distressed wood and brick in this one. So you're going to need canvas, you're going to need some craft paper, you're going to need some Mod Podge, you're going to need paint. For this piece, we're going to need black and white, and then you can choose two other colors that complement your background. And I've chosen a, a baby blue and a yellow. And I use all kinds of paint, any kind of acrylic paint will do. You're also going to need some doilies, and you can get these at a craft supply, supply place. Sorry. Um, I got these at Michael's the other day. These are really cool with this print on them. They have all different colors. And you're going to need some stencils. Just basic circles or squares. This is my new doily stencil that I got the other day. I had fun at the craft store the other day. Um, you're going to need brushes and palette knives, which you can also get at a craft store, and they have these at Walmart. You're going to need some rubber stamps, like you would use to make cards or scrapbooking, and the ink pad that you would use for the stamps also. Okay, I think that's our supply list, and like I said, it's going to be written out for you, typed out for you on the website along with this video. It should be right down beneath the video so that you can look at that and have everything that you need. Okay, let's start by tearing our paper for our background. What I usually do is choose the section of the paper that I want to be right in the middle and then I tear around it. Move my paint over a little bit. I like the way these flowers look over here, so I think I'm going to move it a little bit this direction. And then just tear it off. This is going to supply your background. You don't have to have one big piece, you can tear several pieces and patch them together. Something like this. You could rip this part off. You could put this here. You could put this here. And then fill this in with other pieces that you tear to make your background if you'd like for it to be more random like that. There's no wrong way to do this. You just use your creative license and do it however you want to do. Okay. Let's see here. That looks about right. Sorry, my computer is making noises. Okay, we're going to take our Mod Podge, which gets glued shut sometimes. And I'm going to use my Mod Podge brush, which is missing. Here we go. If you use a brush to apply your Mod Podge, it's going to get stiff very very stiff so 
it's probably best to use one of those little cheap sponge brushes for this but I don't have one on hand so I'm going to use this brush and you're going to just oh, a big clump of Mod Podge I'm almost out I need to get back to the craft store and get some more just going to spread it all over by the way you don't have to use Mod Podge there are other mediums made by companies that you can use um, I'll show you some in just a minute I've got some medium that's made by Liquitex and it works just as well also when you're buying your Mod Podge you need to make sure that you buy the right kind I use the matte there's also a glossy there's, there are all different kinds there's some for outdoor pieces if you don't want it to be super shiny then get the matte version okay once you get down there then put some more on top this seals it and makes it more easy more easy is that right it makes it easier <laughs> for you to paint over the top of the paper otherwise the paper is just gonna really soak up all that paint and make it hard to blend but this also makes it easy for the paper to have bubbles in it so you don't have to work at smoothing those out as you go and really make sure you get your edges down because they're going to want to pop up and we don't want that. Okay. I use my hands a lot. I use my fingers a lot. This mixed media stuff is just messy. So just don't be afraid to get your hands dirty and get in there and have fun. Okay. My edge is trying to pop up so we got to smooth them back down. And there's a big wrinkle right here. We have to push the bubble out. If you hold your canvas up at eye level, you can kind of look at it and see if you see any bubbles there. Looks pretty smooth. It's not going to be perfect, but that's okay. Just get as many bubbles out as you possibly can. Okay, so this is going to be our background. The next thing we're going to do, lots and lots of layers. That's the characteristic of a mixed media piece. It's going to be lots of layers of different kinds. Now this is where you're going to have to sort of make this your own. Depending on what your background looks like, you decide where you want to put your doilies or your stencils or things like that. I'm going to use Got lots of different colors. I think I like that one. I think I'm going to use this one and I might tear a little bit of this white one. You don't have to use the entire thing. You can lay it down where you think you might want it to go and then just tear the edge like that. So that's going to cover up that space there where I tore my paper a little too much. And this one I'm going to let overlap on the side over here. So I'm just going to use your Mod Podge again to put these down. See how this paper just tore right here? If you put things down on top of your wet Mod Podge, that's what's going to happen. It'll pull the top layer of your paper off, so just be careful about that. I think this is going to cover it up anyway, so it doesn't really matter. And just use your fingers to smooth it down. Be careful because these tear very easily. And that one may be stuck. Eek. I'll just put some on top. There was still enough wet Mod Podge underneath. This already stuck. It's not. 
these have so many holes in them that the Mod Podge just kind of leaks through anyway and gets on the top and the bottom all at once. Okay, so we've got our doilies down, we've got our background paper down, still may need to work out a few wrinkles, and if you have wrinkles, when it's over and done with, it's okay. It's just going to happen. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is add some color with our stencils. I'm going to use, let's see, I'm going to use these squares, I think. And I'm going to add some, this pretty blue color. It's called Baby Blue. Doesn't take very much. And I'm going to use a stiff bristled brush and choose, I'm just going to choose some areas to add a little bit of color. I'm going to do some up here. Oh, I got some black in there with it. It's okay, just turn gray. Okay, there's a little bit there. And a little bit more up here. Maybe a little bit down here. You can do that as much or as little as you would like. Another little trick is after you've done it, you're going to have some paint on the top of your stencil here. You can turn that over and press it down. I don't want to color, cover up that flower. I like it a lot. But you can press it down and it's going to give you a different pattern. See the circles here? It's going to be a little messier and a little more random, but you can still use it to add a little bit of color. Okay, so we've got most of our background done. And let that dry for just a second while I get ready for the chapel that we're going to make. Okay, we're going to need some white paint. I've already got a little bit of white here on my palette. And I'm going to use a square brush, a flat square brush. You can use whatever kind of brush you have, it doesn't matter. And we're going to make our chapel out of two or three basic shapes. There's going to be a square, there's going to be a triangle on top, then there's going to be a rectangle and another triangle. So we've got a square, a triangle, a rectangle, a triangle. And we don't want to start it way down here at the very bottom. We want to leave a little bit of space and we're going to start our bottom of our chapel right here. And make sure that you look up high enough to see that you're going to have enough room for the very top of the, the steeple. So I think mine's going to be about here so that I have plenty of room to go up. So we start with our square. And it does not need to be exact. Just a rough little square. Then on top of that, we're going to make a triangle. And the triangle needs to come out a little bit from the edge of the square. Okay? And just fill that in. And then above the triangle, we're going to have a little rectangle that's going to come down and touch the top side. Don't paint all the way down like this because you're going to mess up where the peak of your roof is here. So just come down a little bit and fill that in. 
here and here. Okay, then you're going to have the really tall and skinny triangle. Don't you love my technical terms? Really tall, skinny triangle. Okay. I'm going to straighten this up a little bit here. And that is your basic shape for your little chapel. Okay. I'm going to go back and put some more white on top to fill this in a little bit. And we're going to add the doors and windows. So next, I'm going to use the same blue, a little bit more of it, and we're going to make the windows this color. The shape of the windows, the best way I can describe the shape would be a long oval with a pointy top. <laughs> so we're going to start at the bottom and make an oval, oblong shape, and we're going to give it a little bit of a pointy top, just like that. And do another one over here. And then I'm going to do one up here at the very top. And I'm going to do a circle here in the middle. Okay, so there's our windows. I'm going to add a little bit of yellow to those windows. Give them a little bit of warmth and make them look happy. Just a little blob on your brush randomly put it in there okay I'll let that dry for just a minute I'm going to take my palette knife and I'm going to take some of this yellow and add some color here. Like I said, I use my fingers a lot just around the edge to brighten it up a little bit. I don't want to cover up my flowers too much. Put a little bit over here. This edge. Maybe a tiny more up here. And you could do that with your fingers, you could do that with a small brush, just scraping down like this with it. You can put a little bit on the brush and pull down. Don't try to paint like this. Turn it sideways and just pull it down like this. And that gives it some interest. It's not a straight line. Okay, so if you don't have a palette knife, it's okay. You can still use a brush to do that. And you can also use a brush to do the next part that we're about to do. But I use a palette knife. I take some black paint and turn my palette knife on its side and scrape through the paint. And then I'm going to trace around the edge of my chapel. So I like to turn my canvas to the side, makes it easier, and you're just going to run it down the edge just like that, both sides. And 
see where we kept the peak of this. That was important because we've got to be able to see where to draw this line. And mine is going to be messy. I like for it to look messy and may not be exactly straight. Okay, do the sides here. Make that a little bit thicker. I'm going to take some of this black and run it across the bottom down here to give it the appearance of a yard or the ground in the front. And, oh, I forgot the door. Let me go back and do that. Just take a little bit of your white and your black and mix them together and make them a little marbled. Don't mix it completely. You need to be able to see some of the black and some of the white on your brush. And then just go in and make little strokes for your door. Okay. And I also go around the windows and the door with my black and my palette knife. If you try to do this perfectly, you're going to be very frustrated, so just let it be messy. It's okay. It gives it character. And the circle is the hardest thing to do. It's going to be really wobbly. Okay, so now we've got our background made of paper, we've got our doilies here, we've got our little white chapel, we've got our stenciling, um, I'm going to add a little bit of white down here on this at the bottom. Brighten that up a little bit. And that's it. I hope you had lots of fun, and I hope that you will share with me what you created.